Welcome to Seabury's holiday story sharing time. Today we're going to hear Lynn Skull read Herschel and the Hanukkah Goblins, a story for all ages with a lot of meaning and power to it. Hi, I'm Lynn Skull. I'm going to read a book called Herschel and the Hanukkah Goblins by Eric Kimmel and illustrated by Trina Shart Hyman. Uh, in, in short, this book is about overcoming obstacles. <clears throat> it was the first night of Hanukkah. Herschel of Ostropol was walking down the road. He was tired and hungry. Nonetheless, his step was light. Soon he would reach the next village, where bright candles, merry songs, and platters piled high with tasty potato latkes awaited him. But when he arrived, the village was silent and dark. Not a single Hanukkah candle could be seen. Isn't tonight the first night of Hanukkah, Herschel asked the villagers. We don't have Hanukkah, Herschel, one of them replied sadly. No Hanukkah. How can that be? It's because of the goblins. They haunt the old synagogue at the top of the hill. They hate Hanukkah. Whenever we try to light a menorah, the goblins blow out the candles. They break our dreidels. They throw our potato latkes on the floor. Those wicked goblins make our lives miserable all year long. But on Hanukkah, it's really bad. Herschel knew he must help the village people. I'm not afraid of goblins, he said. Tell me how to get rid of them. It's not as easy as you think, the rabbi warned. You must spend eight nights in the old synagogue. The Hanukkah candles must be lit each night. On the eighth night, the king of the goblins must light them himself. That is the only way to break their power. I'm not afraid, Rabbi, Herschel said. If I can't outwit a few goblins, then my name isn't Herschel of Ostropole. <clears throat> the villagers wished Herschel good luck. They had no latke, potato latkes to give him, so they packed several hard-boiled eggs for him to eat, along with a big jar of pickles. The rabbi gave Herschel a brass menorah, a package of candles, and a box of matches. Then the villagers said goodbye. Nobody expected to see Herschel again. It was long past sundown by the time Herschel climbed to the top of the hill where the old synagogue stood. The crumbling building was gloomy and dark. The rusty hinges squealed as Herschel opened the door. Herschel shuddered. Well could he believe that goblins lived here. He put two candles in the menorah and set it on the windowsill. He struck a match and lit the shamus candle. He said the blessings and was about to light the other candle when he heard a voice. Hey, what are you doing? Herschel turned around. Here was a goblin no bigger than a horsefly with a long pointy tail and two little bat's wings hovering in the air. I'm lighting Hanukkah candles, Herschel said. Tonight is the first light of Hanukkah. Oh, no, it's not. We don't allow Hanukkah. Not around here. Is that so, said Herschel. Who's going to stop me? A little pipsqueak like you? I may be little, but I'm strong, said the goblin. Really? Can you crush rocks in your hand, asked Herschel. The goblin laughed. Crush rocks? You're joking. Nobody's that strong. I am. Watch. Herschel took a hard-boiled egg from the pocket and squeezed it until the yolk and white ran through his fingers. That's how hard I'm going to squeeze you if you try to stop me from lighting these candles. The little goblin's eyes opened wide, since in the dim light, the egg looked exactly like a rock. The little goblin shook with fear. You leave me alone, he squeaked. Gladly, said Herschel, if you let me light my candles in peace. All right, said the goblin. One night won't make a difference, but
but you better not be here tomorrow. Big scary goblins are coming, much bigger than I. If they catch you lighting Hanukkah candles, you'll be sorry. We'll see about that, Herschel said to himself, and he lit the first candle. On the second night, another goblin appeared. This one was big and fat and waddled like a goose. Herschel was finishing his dinner with pickles and hard-boiled eggs. Have some pickles, he said to the goblin. Pickles? Here, catch. Herschel tossed him a sour pickle. The goblin caught it in his mouth and swallowed it. Mmm, pickles are good. Do you like them? I have plenty in this jar. Take all you want. The greedy goblin grabbed as many pickles as Claw could hold, but when he tried to pull his fist out of the jar, he couldn't. I'm stuck, the goblin shouted. You put a spell on this jar to hold me fast. That's right, Herschel said laughing, and it's a very powerful spell. You came here tonight to stop me from lighting Hanukkah candles. So now I'm going to light them while you stand with your hand in that jar and watch. How do you like that? No, no, the goblin screamed. I hate Hanukkah. Too bad. You'll have to get used to it, Herschel said. He said the blessings and lit the candles slowly. Then he sang all his favorite Hanukkah songs. The goblin wailed and carried on so much that Herschel finally decided to let him go. Shall I tell you how to break the spell? Yes, yes, I can't stand it anymore. Let go of the pickles. Your greed is the only spell holding you prisoner. The goblin let go of the pickles. His hand slipped out of the jar easily. How that goblin ranged. He had stood with his hand in a pickle jar while Herschel lit Hanukkah candles under his nose. The furious goblin stamped his foot so loud, hard that he shattered into a million pieces. The wind blew them away. The third night came. Herschel felt something watching him as he set the candles in the menorah. Instead of lighting them, he began playing with the dreidel. An hour passed. Herschel looked up. Sitting across the table was another goblin. This one had fiery red face and two enormous horns. It's getting late, the goblin said. When are you going to light the candles? Later. There's plenty of time. Herschel spun his dreidel. This is more fun. What are you playing with? The goblin asked. It looks like a top. It's a dreidel. Don't you know about dreidels? No. Too bad. Dreidels are lots of fun. You can also make lots of money if you know how to play. Really? The goblin was interested now. All goblins like money. This one was no exception. How do you play? It's very simple, Herschel said. But you must have gold. That's the first rule. I have plenty. Is this enough? The goblin poured a pile of gold coins onto the table. That's fine, Herschel said. Listen carefully now. This letter is Shin. If it comes up, you give me a handful of gold. This letter is Hey. If it comes up, you give me half your gold. This is Gimel. If the dreidel falls on this letter, you give me all your gold. Understand? Wait, there's one letter left. What about this one? That's Nun. If the dreidel falls on Nun, I don't give you anything. Ready? Let's play. You go first. The goblin spun the dreidel. The little top whirled round and round, and when it fell, the letter on top was Shin. Too bad, Herschel said, taking a big handful of the goblin's gold. Try again. Maybe you'll have better luck. The goblin spun the dreidel once more. This time, it fell on hay. This isn't your night, Herschel said, helping himself to half the goblin's gold. One more time, your look is bound to improve. Once again, the goblin spun. This time, the dreidel landed on Gimel. Too bad, Herschel sighed as he took the rest of the goblin's gold. Would you like me to spin? 
Yes, the goblin grumbled. He was very unhappy about losing his money. Herschel spun the dreidel. This time the letter Nun was on top. Oh my, I don't give you anything. I get to keep all the gold. Say, that was fun. Give me some more gold and we'll play again. What about the Hanukkah candles? We'll light them later. There's plenty of time. Not for me, the goblin said. I'm leaving now. I don't like this game. I don't like Hanukkah and I don't like you. Don't go, Herschel pleaded. I know lots of games. Stay a while. We'll have fun. Goodbye. The goblin spread his wings, swooped out the door, and flew off into the night. Herschel lit the candles all by himself. On the following nights, other goblins came. One had six heads. One had three eyes. All were terrible and fierce. They growled and roared and changed themselves into horrible shapes. They tried to stop Herschel from lighting the Hanukkah candles, but Herschel fooled them all. Finally, the seventh night arrived. Eight tiny candles flickered on the windowsill. Herschel sat back to enjoy their light. Where were the goblins? Had they finally given up? Herschel felt very sleepy. His eyes closed. Suddenly, he sat up. He heard a horrible sound a voice that sounded like the crackling of bones. Happy Hanukkah, Herschel of Ostropol. Who is that? Who's there? Don't you know who I am, Herschel? Aren't you expecting the king of the goblins? The voice rose to a hurricane roar. It ripped the shingles from the synagogue roof and shattered the windows. The Hanukkah candles reeled in the savage blast but they did not go out. You're too early, Herschel shrieked. You're not supposed to come until tomorrow. The great wind died down. Don't worry, Herschel. I am far away, but I have the power to see you and speak to you. Enjoy this Hanukkah evening, my friend. It will be your last. Tomorrow night I will come for you. You fooled my slaves, the other goblins. Let's see if you can fool me. Poor Herschel, what was he to do? The king of the goblins was on his way and no power on earth could stop him. Unless, unless, Herschel had an idea. It was a big chance, but he had to take it. It was the only way to save himself and Hanukkah. It was the last night of Hanukkah. Herschel set the candles in the menorah, but instead of placing it on the windowsill, he put the menorah and the box of matches on a small table near the door. Then he sat down to wait. Night fell. It grew dark as pitch inside the gloomy old synagogue. Outside, the whole world lay cold and silent. Suddenly, a great gust ripped the synagogue doors from its hinges. The whole building shook. A fearsome voice spoke, Herschel of Ostropol. Did I hear something? It is I, the king of the goblins. Herschel laughed. Don't be silly. You're one of the boys from the village. You're trying to scare me. I am not a boy. I am the king of the goblins. I'll believe it when I see it. Show yourself to me. Behold, I stand before you. Do you believe me now? Herschel tried not to look. Even in the darkness, he could see the outline of a monstrous shape filling the doorway, a figure too horrible to describe. He pretended not to care. It's too dark. I can't see anything. A candlestick and some matches are by the doorway. Why don't you light a few candles? Then I'll see what you really are. Indeed you shall. A match flared. The shamus candle caught the flame and Herschel's blood turned to water at the awful sight before him. But he did not lose courage. 
Master of the world, he silently prayed, Thou who created the heavens and the earth and the spirits of the air, stand by me now. Then he addressed the goblin, It's still too dark. What are you afraid of? There are plenty of candles. Why not light them all? A hideous hand took the shaman's candle and lit the others one by one. <clears throat> Herschel felt himself growing faint, but he forced himself to look. His eyes grew wider and wider as each candle caught the flame. Six, seven, eight. The king of goblins stood before him. Now, Herschel, do you know who I am? I know you're not Queen Esther. Very funny. Enjoy the joke. It will be your last. That's what you think. Be gone, or I'll take a stick to you. How dare you speak to the king of the goblins that way? I'll speak to you any way I please. You have no power. Your spell is broken. See? The menorah is lit. You thought those were ordinary candles you were lighting. They weren't. They were Hanukkah candles. And you lit them yourself. The king of the goblins roared with fury. The earth trembled and a mighty wind arose. It ripped off the synagogue roof and blew down the walls. It splintered the great timbers and scattered them like matchsticks. Around the menorah, the whirlwind howled, but the candles never flickered. They burned with clear, steady flame. The king of the goblins had no power over them. The spirit of Hanukkah had triumphed. The great wind vanished as suddenly as it had risen. Herschel rubbed his eyes. The night was as still as before, even though the synagogue was gone. Walls, floor, roof, even the foundation stones had vanished. But the menorah remained, standing tall upon the little table where Herschel had placed it. Herschel waited until the last candle burned out. Then he started down the road that led to the village. I'd better hurry, he thought. I don't want to miss the last night of Hanukkah. But there was no reason to worry. In every window, there stood a menorah with nine gleaming candles to light the way. The whole village was waiting for him. The end.